Hi, this is Munzin with Munzin Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called Today by Smashing Pumpkins and Billy Corgan. So anyway, it starts off, it's, it's tuned down a half step, so it, we're going to do this lesson in standard tuning because I, I don't want to have to retune my guitar, and I mean, you, you're welcome to if you want to. Um, if you want to play with the recording, you will have to, so you have to go to the, tuning, to, to the tuners and then loosen them up just a little bit. So kind of E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. So you're gonna loosen them up just a little bit to play with the recording. But the main, uh, on the intro, this is the coolest look, is you start off 12th fret on the high E and then 12th fret on the B. And I'm doing that as a mini bar because everybody loves mini bars. So, so, so we're going 12 on the high E, 12 on the B, and then 14 on the high E. I'm doing that second finger, back to the B, and then lifting that off. Go back to the 12, 12, and then you can go to 16. You can do this with the pinky. It's easier on electric. That's my disclaimer. And yeah, you could do 16 on the high E as a pull off to 12, and then back to the 12 on the B. So you got 12, 12, 14, 12, 12, 12, 16 pull off to 12, 12 on the B. So 12, 12, 14, 12, 12, 12, 16, 12. Or, like, the notes you're playing, is you're going E, B, F sharp, B, E, B, and then G sharp, B, B. So you kind of dig on working that, kind of for your intro part. And then the chords that are kind of backing that up come in on an E major chord um, when they kind of kick in. And normally you do this first finger on the G first fret, second finger on the A second, and third finger on the D second. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Now around E's in general, it can be kind of cool to take the pinky and add him in on the G string second. Kind of make that an E suspended chord if you kind of dig on that. Or if you really want to rock this out, you can play just the E string and the A string of that, kind of an E5 power chord. Or you can play an E5 by doing 7 on the A, 3rd finger on the D9, kind of working that for the E major. And then from the E, we'd be going to a B major chord. Now you could kind of work this as kind of a second fret bar, third finger over the D, G, and B strings. It's kind of a double bar idea for B major. Um, or you could work this as, as a, a B5 power chord right there, kind of second fret on the A, uh, third finger on the D string, fourth fret, kind of for B5 power chord. Or randomly you could also do this as a B7 chord, which would be very jazzy, kind of first finger on the D first fret, second finger on the A second. Third finger on the G second, pinky on the high second. Kind of working that voicing. Or you could take the third finger and flatten them over the G, B, and E. Make it a B9. Kind of jazz things a little bit. Or you may even dig on kind of going seventh fret bar. Second finger on the G, eighth fret. Third finger on the A9, pinky on the D9. Working as a E shape for the B major. Or you may dig on, instead of doing the bar, you could lift it up. First finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B second. So big party on the second fret, everybody! Quick, run to the second fret. Um, so if, if if you lift off the third finger from there, that makes an A sus two, uh, which sounds really open and breezy. And then you can take the pinky and put him on the B string third, an A suspended, which really sounds like it wants to go somewhere, but it doesn't know where. Um, so you could say something around the A. Or you could use the power chord idea by doing the open A and the D string. Kind of make it really heavy. Or, or you could do kind of fifth on the low E, seventh fret on the A string. It's an A5. You really want to make this really thick. Or you may dig on kind of the fifth fret bar. Second finger on the G, sixth, third finger on the A7, pinky on the D7. Oh, very powerful A major. Or if you're digging on the drone sound, you can lift off the, the bar and use just first finger on the low E. It's Alice in Chains day, y'all. That's <laughs> right. Anyway, so, so you got the A major. Um, kind of working that too. Um, so you may want to kind of work that that through. And it, it is a little weird. It's almost like your, your E lasts for four, D for four, and then A for eight. just a down kind of an idea but then all of a sudden we make a change to a C sharp note 
kind of that third time, time through. Um, and this is kind of weird because I think the C sharp is really, for the most part, always the power chord, but your ear is going to tell you it's major and minor, like differently. So this, this is a little weird. Um, but normally you would do C sharp minor as a fourth fret bar. Second finger on the B string, fifth, third finger on the D, sixth pinky on the G, sixth. Oh, that the bad, yo. Um, all right, or you could lift off the pinky and make it a C sharp minor seven. Uh, that's very jazzy. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E seven. That'd be very cool. Although I think what you're really going for is kind of the fourth fret on the A, third finger on the D, sixth fret. Or a C sharp five. You know, kind of make it really, really heavy through that part. And on this particular C sharp, we're going to go with the minor. Well, later on, we'll talk about the major because I think it does kind of change, or your sense of it changes. So you got four on the C sharp minor, four on the A, and then we go back to E, and then the B, and then the A, kind of through the intro idea. And there's a couple strumming um, things that you could kind of follow. One of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 light, this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So if you took the E and just tried that a lot, you have down, 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 you may kind of want a half the E and the B. So you can do that with a down, down up on each chord. Or you could kind of split the pattern if you dig on that. Kind of E, down, up, E, up, down. Up. Or you might want to anticipate things. You could do the E with a down, down, B on the up, up, down, kind of an idea. So you want to play around with, with all those different ways to kind of do it. Today is the major. happening before the verse. <laughs> this is all instrumental. My bad. Um, so anyway, uh, or you may want to just make that hit too. You'll definitely hear where it's like. You know what I mean? Like just if you really want to make it really big. You know, down, down, mute, 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 mute is what I'm kind of gravitating to. So I'm kind of killing the thing. I'm doing with left hand. Right hand makes percussion sounds. <laughs> e, down, up, down, up, B, down, up, down, up, A, down, up, down, up, B. So if you want to... God, that reminds me of another song. Alright, but anyway. Alright, so, so, so anyway, you may want to play around with that. Or, for myself, what felt really good is a 16th note strum pattern. What I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot at the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts, so that down, down, up, up, down. One, two, one, two. All right, that's called an eighth note. And what a sixteenth note is, is where you divide that into four parts. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, So what you may want to do is kind of go, well, on the first beat, one of my favorite sixteenth note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, down. And, and what I mean by that is if you take the E and do it down for four, then that's that, that's what you do on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do it down on one, down on three, up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. And then on the third beat, you do it up on two, down on three. So you're going one, two, three, four, down. Down, down, up, right along with with the one, two, three, four. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down. So all together, you got down, down, up, down, 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 um, and this is a little weird, actually. If, if, well, yeah, let's just try the intro uh, one time that way. So, so on the halving parts, you could do the down, 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 up. Just kind of half the pattern for those chords. Um, or another way to do it is to split the pattern between them. So doing the E with the down, 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 up. And then go to the B for the up, down, down, up, down, up. And then kind of have your A for the whole pattern. So 
we kind of dig on that too. Um, so we try the intro that way. Yeah, that E. into our verse and we kind of start out with that E to B and then A and we end up repeating that three times but the last time you kind of do the E to the B and then we go to a C sharp but it really starts to sound really happy da, da. So, so you may want to do this as kind of a fourth fret bar third finger over the D G and B kind of make it a C sharp major or you may dig on putting third finger on the D six pinky on the B six that really nasty, you go for the C sharp seven. Um, kind of dig on that, or if you want to jazz it up, which could be cool. Um, you can do first finger on the D third fret, second finger on the A fourth fret, third finger over the G B and E, make it a C sharp nine, people. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, so I got my third finger over the G B and E on the fourth fret. So you can kind of dig on that too, man. I've got the very cool voicing. So through that whole verse, right, our first verse, we got the E. Drumming options we were talking about. It's just too happy, isn't it? Yeah. You just gotta go for the major, you know. Oh, but yeah, so. And then from there, we'd be going into our chorus part. And, and on our chorus, we go to an F sharp major chord. And normally you do the second fret bar, second finger on the G third, third finger on the A fourth, pinky on the D fourth. Ah, the beautiful sounds of an F sharp major. Um, now, if you're trying to avoid the bar chords, and that's definitely a possibility with this song, you could just go with the power chord. So you could do first finger on the Louis second, third finger on the A fourth fret. Um, or if you really dig on that, you might want to use the, the whole major. You could jazz it up a little bit by lifting the pinky, making an F sharp 7, or adding in the pinky on the B string fifth. And F sharp 7. Um, but you may want to just make that major, major happiness is cool. Um, and we do the F sharp and then the A, and then we kind of go into our C sharp. It's almost that same half the idea we were doing with our other chords. F sharp, A, C sharp. But you will hear these cool little bends come out of 7th fret on the string and you could even kind of try and do the C sharp minor or the C sharp major while you're trying to jump into that bend too. That F sharp A, C sharp and F sharp A, C sharp, F sharp A, C sharp and then the last time you got F sharp A, but then we go to a, a G sharp major. And normally you would do this as a 4th fret bar, 2nd finger on the G, 5th fret, 3rd finger on the A, 6th pinky on the D, 6th. You strum all those together, that's not a G sharp major. You could also make this a G sharp 7. I think you could also add in that pinky on the B string for G sharp 7. You dig on that. You could also work it just a G sharp 5, kind of 1st finger on the E, 6th fret, 3rd finger on the A string on the 6th fret, 4 and 6, G sharp. And then from there, it's kind of cool. Um, it, it sounds like we go to our B chord, but the bass player decided to play a D sharp note. <laughs> and if you're doing it on the power chords, you may want to do the sixth fret on the A string, and then take a pinky and go to the D string on the ninth fret. This would be something called, I call it B3 slash D sharp, because it's B and a third, but a third below. So it has a D sharp in the bass. So B3, because it's just a root and a third, not a fifth. Um, and then D sharp's in the bass. So B3 slash D sharp. So you may kind of dig on working it that way too. Kind of put the G sharp to kind of work, get that right bass note. Or you could just generalize it. So through that whole chorus that way, you have the F sharp bass, C sharp. And then from
from there, then we can go in back into our verse. Now, one other thing you may want to add to the song is you could add bass notes. So on the E chord, for instance, you have the low E string for the bass. On the A, you have the A for the bass. On the you have the fifth fret bar, and then you have the low E for the bass. On the B, you have low E for the bass. Um, on the C sharp, you have the A for the bass. On the B7, you have the A for the bass. And on the G sharp, you have low E for the bass. On the B3 slash D sharp, you'd be trying to bring out the A string on the bass, apparently. Um, so through the verse, kind of working a bass down, up, up, down, up, you could work kind of that happy idea for the E, B, A. Tried that with a bass down, up, up, down, up. You have the F sharp, A, B, and this part does get things and kind of kind of mixes them up so yeah. That's the basics of how you could play through today by the Smashing Pumpkins. So good luck!